It is Friday. Hope you're doing well. Welcome to the CBSN Minnesota Daybreaker. I'm Jason DeRussia. Glad to have you with us today. Hope you're uh, ready for the weekend. I sure am. We uh, <laughs> are looking forward to a big change in the weather starting tomorrow. But first, we have to get through today, and it could be a little dicey. Right now, we have storms coming through uh, parts of Minnesota, largely to the north of the Twin Cities. But uh, if you are in the metro Twin Cities area right now, you probably see those clouds out there. And boy, if you went outside to walk the dog or water the flowers or anything, holy moly, it is muggy. Wow. Uh, 82 by noon. This afternoon, the scattered showers start to creep in around four out to the west. You can see those the Metro Twin Cities. Riley is thinking more like seven or eight is when we'll see those six, seven, eight o'clock is when those storms should come in. But you know, when the weather is like this, you never quite know uh, when those storms will form and roll through. So just be on alert for this throughout the day. By the time those storms move through, they should be done by midnight or so. Uh, the humidity will be gone as well. And then the next five, six days, ah, upper 70s looking fantastic. Let's talk about this. COVID-19 has turned a lot of us who liked to go to stores into people using curbside pickup, delivery, lots more online shopping. A new report indicating COVID has led to new shopping habits for 90% of Americans. Three quarters of us say we are shopping online more now than we did prior to the pandemic. Almost nine in 10 say they'll keep shopping online more, even when there's a cure or a vaccine. So we wanted to know, are you Corona shopping? Are you just stuck at home and like, I need to, I need to shop online? What are you buying online? Survey said uh, the biggest items are clothing, household stuff, groceries, and video games. Yeah, so if you're watching on Facebook while you're playing Mario Kart on your iPhone, leave a comment here. Uh, we'll read through a couple in a moment. Let's update you on some news headlines. A couple of uh, rough stories to start with because there were a couple of murders to tell you about. A man dead after being shot and killed overnight in Minneapolis. Police say this happened at an apartment complex on the 1700 block of 3rd Avenue South. This is just like across Interstate 94 from the backside of the convention center. Uh, the first reports came in just before four this morning, a fight inside one of the units, and then people said they heard shots a short time later. One man hit and killed. Nobody's been arrested. Minneapolis police say the number of homicides is close to double what it was at this time last year. After being shot in the stomach, a Twin Cities toddler is fighting to stay alive, and the witnesses who saw this happen are trying to cover it up. According to police, officers were dispatched to the Huntington Place apartments in Brooklyn Park early yesterday morning. Inside the apartment, they said there were at least five adults and all giving conflicting stories about how this went down, how this two-year-old was shot. Child's mother was one of the adults in the apartment at the time of the shooting. Police say another factor that is holding up their investigation is that they don't know where the gun that was used to shoot that toddler is. They're horrified that that nobody in the house right is coming forward and help and resolve this. And these are officers that had to do CPR on this little child. Um, and that's hard. It's hard for everybody involved. Police say a man in his mid-20s who goes by the street name BD was seen running from the apartment after the shooting. As kids head back to school, parents looking for signs of COVID and the flu. I don't want you to freak out about this, but there is another outbreak that federal disease experts expect to happen and they want you to know about it. It's acute flaccid myelitis. It tends to affect small children, median age around five years old. Doctors at Gillette's say it starts with a virus similar to a common cold, but then kids seemingly at random start to feel weakness in their limbs and chest. Sometimes this leads to paralysis. It is a medical emergency. The diagnosis, very, very, very rare. Usually only a few hundred kids a year get AFM among them. In 2018, three-year-old Orville here in Minneapolis, he suddenly couldn't move his arm. Today, his mom really wants parents to know those signs and make sure they get help right away. Don't be scared to take your kid to the hospital. I know that we're, you know, in a pandemic right now, but it's important that the kids get treated early and that the doctors know that this is happening. So if a doctor tries to tell you that your kid isn't moving their arm because there's something else going on, um, don't be afraid to push them for answers. 
AFM, a bit of a, a, a medical mystery. Doctor with Gillette told us they're still working to try to figure out why it affects some kids and not others. And it's also sort of weird that it pops up every other year. The CDC says it uh, shows up, you know, it was here t uh, two years ago and then two years before that, and it's usually most active between August and October. So now you know about that. Uh, what are you doing a year from now? Yeah, well, beats me. Minnesota's health leaders are planning out their fight against COVID as to what they might be doing a year in advance. State Director of Homeland Security, Joe Kelly. Talk with our Liz Collin. Joe Kelly, he's been on the front lines of this thing since day one. We saw him a lot during those COVID-19 briefings that were going on once a day at the early phase of this, but we've seen him less lately, and he says Minnesotans should feel good about that. He and other health officials are planning ahead, doing things like stockpiling PPE, preparing this alternate care site in Roseville to handle non-COVID cases if hospitals run out of room. It's good to have hope, but hope is not a plan, and we can't hope that the hospitals will, will run out of capacity. Uh, we have to have a plan if they do. So not only do we have the one prototype here in the metro area, but we also have other sites designated around the state that we would go to. Speaking of hope, doctors at the U of M testing out a new treatment they developed for the very sickest patients. FDA recently approved it. Treatment uses a special form of stem cells called MSCs, and those cells stop the body's immune system from damaging a person's lungs. More doses of it spread out. So far, one patient in Minnesota has received it. Researchers say it's going well. They're hoping positive results will let them expand to other sites around the country. Cleanup continuing in Iowa. Man, Iowa just battered by this derecho earlier this week. Power outages throughout the state. XL Energy says they've sent about 90 crews from Minnesota down to Iowa to help them restore power. They've been working for three days now. Still, a lot of people without power. That storm's so strong. Packing wind gusts uh, sustained around 60 miles an hour, but some went up to 100 miles an hour. Really bad crop damage down there in Iowa. Our thoughts go to our residents, our neighbors to the south. Hey, get too close to a bald eagle, you might pay the price. Cook County deputies say a Cascade Lodge resort guest uh, saw what they thought was an injured eagle yesterday morning, and the eagle attacked the person. And then the resort kitchen manager, Bernie, ran to help. And, well, eagle talons are sharp. <laughs> right? That shirt is shredded. Good news is Bernie's fine. The Eagle's fine. A couple deputies stayed there to kind of keep an eye on it. And then uh, the Eagle let the deputies know who's boss by hanging out on top of one of the sheriff's trucks while they waited for wildlife experts to arrive. Uh, this is pretty good news. One of our most talented chefs and really an inspiring and terrific woman with a great story, James Beard Award winner Ann Kim. She is opening a restaurant in the new Omni Hotel that's going up on the Minnesota Vikings campus in Egan. Uh, Rick Nelson in the Star Tribune talked to Ann about it. It's going to be called Kindred Hearth. They'll have the same copper-clad wood-burning oven that you see at Young Joni and Pizzeria Lola, and they'll have her uh, pizzas, of course. But also other stuff that a hotel restaurant would need, right? So they're doing handmade pastas. She's got a breakfast menu with a Korean rice porridge that was a uh, riff on a childhood staple. And Kim grew up nearby to where the Vikings training facility is in Apple Valley. And so this new hotel expected to open in October. Good news. Popular sound of summer getting remixed with a little bit of a new hook. It's just a small chunk of uh, the new ice cream truck music that Good Humor uh, teamed up with the uh, RZA of Wu-Tang Clan. They wrote that jingle for ice cream trucks. They say the traditional song, Turkey in the Straw, has racist origins, should be replaced with a song that brings happiness to all communities, right? New tune will be heard in ice cream trucks starting this month. Let's get back to today's talker, online corona shopping. Our digital manager, Eric, is with us today. And uh, Eric, online shopping, have you been? Uh, have oh, you been I've been there for like 15 years. Yeah, you're old school <laughs> online. We're, I love going to stores. My wife and I like to shop in person, and uh, it has been different to shift a lot of our shopping to online. Uh, if you notice my inseam on my pants, I can't even find my size in stores yeah. in the first place. So I've I've, <laughs> I've been buying well, my jeans. You probably could find your size. You'd have to go to like the the uh, teenager section. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? The yeah. bean pole section. The bean pole section. <clears throat> uh, Diana says I will do both. It helps to do online groceries because then my husband cannot fill my cart with impulse buys, <laughs> destroying my budget. There is that. I feel like online shopping brings a different sort of impulse buy. But yeah, for sure, with groceries, you're a little more planned. 
Uh, Deb says, prefer shopping in a store. I need to touch and feel what I'm buying. I do not trust the quality of online merchandise. Mm. Yeah, that's happened to all of us, right? Where you bought something online, it's like, ah, oh, no wonder this was $14. Feels like it, you know? Exactly. Similarly, Andrea says, I'll maybe buy household things, but I need to try on my clothes and shoes. Yeah. I fear the day I wear holes in my jeans. <laughs> clothing is tricky online, but 60% said they've been buying clothing. Uh, online for sure. All right, one more. Uh, one exactly. More. Uh, and Tume says online shopping only for me. There it so, is. Yeah. yeah, it's. I mean, this was going that way already, but Target had data that showed how many people uh, started doing like online pickup and online shopping for them. It was like five million new shoppers. So so many of us really are store shoppers that have kind of been uh, pushed into this territory, and you find out, kind of like it. Right. All right, that's it. That's Daybreaker. I'm off next week. You're in good hands. Heather Brown will keep you updated Monday through Friday on the CBSN Minnesota Daybreaker. Have a great weekend, everyone.